Hi folks, in this video we continue our discussion of the powers of bool, what bool can and can't do, and we're going to look at the concept of validity. Sometimes bool can prove that arguments are valid, sometimes it can prove arguments are invalid, but then again there's also limitations to bool. Sometimes we might have valid arguments and bool can't prove that they're valid. Um, and why is that? Um, what we're going to see is that the same facts that came up with equivalence and necessary truth are come up with validity too. If the validity of the argument depends upon the truth functional connectives, or, then Boole can handle it. But if the validity of the argument depends upon some other part of logic, then that's outside the scope or the powers of Boole, and Boole won't be able to do it. All right, let's try an example to see if you can figure this out. Here are two sentences. Not A or not not A and B. This is sentence number one. And the other sentence is this, not not A or not A and B. <clears throat> And what I want you to do is think, what if I take one as the premise and two as the conclusion? I use sometimes in these joint truth tables, I put this little um, stroke here in order, the slash mark, in order to, to encode the information. This is like the, the horizontal line of an argument that means therefore. So this means this one is the premise, this one is the conclusion. I want you to tell me, is the argument valid or not? Um, so try to use Boole and the truth table technique um, to do this. All right, pause your videos and see if you can figure this out. All right, last chance to pause your videos. Um, if you don't know what you should be doing, of course, the fact that I set this up in a truth table hopefully clues you in. The first thing to do is do a truth function for these things. So, um, so if that wasn't already apparent to you, now's your really last chance to pause your videos. Use the truth table method to try to figure these out. Okay, we're gonna talk about the answers. When I do the truth functions for these, this is what I get. The first one is TFTT, so I just put in red the only false value. The second one is all Ts. Now, so now you know, look, this is a tautology. Look, this is contingent. Um, this one we know is necessarily true because the laws of truth functional logic. Now, how do we assess validity though? Because what we wanna know is if number one is true, is number two true? Um, so, so I guess I'm curious if people said, is it valid or not? In fact, this is valid. Yes, it's a valid argument. Because whenever number one is true, if this is a T, this is also true. And if, look, if this is T, this is also true. If row on row four, if this is T, this is also true. So if number one is true, then number two is true. Yes, it's true. Now people oftentimes get tripped up. They think, okay, but what about this? If this is false, then that, is true and that seems like that's the counterexample. No, you don't worry about when the premise is false when you assess validity. Nobody cares about the false premises. The validity says if the premise is true, then so and so must happen. Validity says who cares when the premise is false? You can just totally ignore it. For some reason, that's a really hard fact to grasp. People zero in on the fact that this is false somewhere where that is true and they think that that's bad. Anywhere that the premise is false, you just totally ignore it. You just wonder, circle all the places where this is true, the conclusion must be true in all of those places. That's the test. Um, now, an, another thing that might have tipped you off, of course, remember the weird cases of validity. Um, logical truths follow validly for anything, and you know a tautology is a type of logical truth, so that might have also helped you understand um, why this argument has to be valid. Now, there's a little symbol we'll, we'll use in validity. This is shorthand. So this double bar arrow pointing in one direction, this says this sentence entails that sentence. This is just our little symbol for validity. This is not a symbol we're adding to bool. This is a symbol in English. It's just shorthand for the English, which says entailment. So-and-so entails so-and-so. Just read that symbol that way. All right, now we can do another problem here. I want you to assess this one. Use the same truth table. Does number two entail number one? So I wanna know about going the other direction. If this is the premise, and number one is the conclusion, is that argument valid or not? So pause your videos and see if you can assess that one. You don't even have to do any more computations. Okay, last chance to pause your videos. Now, we see a problem. You see, anytime this is true, number two is true, then number one has to be true. And look, it's true, when two is true here, then one is true. Rows one, three, and four are all okay, but look at row two. The premise is true, but the conclusion is false. So it's not true that whenever the premise is true, the conclusion is also true. We have a counterexample. Row two is the problem. So this is invalid 
because of row two. And we call these things, this is what a counterexample is. The counterexample is the scenario on which the premise is true, but the conclusion is false. That's, that invalidates the argument. So, it's, so we say, it, number, one, number two, this thing does not entail, we put a lead, red slash through this, does not entail this other sentence. Now, remember on the previous sentence, um, let me go back to the previous argument um, where we're looking in the other direction. Um, when number one does entail number two. When we saw that this is valid, it was not sufficient that there was some truth of the premise and the conclusion was also true. So one positive hit here does not, is not what makes this argument valid. What makes it valid is that for every case in which the premise is true, all three of these have to check out. Um, and that was the problem here. You see, sometimes people say this argument is valid because row one checks out. So one sufficient row checking out, you might think, makes it valid. But that's not true. What, what validity requires is whenever the premise is true, every T over here has to check out. And if any one of them fails to check out, like on row two, then the argument is invalid. A single counterexample shows that the whole argument is invalid. That's, and that's how the truth table technique works. All right, so what you should be able to do, if we give you any two random complex sentences, you should be able to tell us when one entails the other and vice versa. All right, um, let me say one other thing about the relationship between validity and equivalence. You might have noticed that the symbol that we're using for validity here is just like the equivalence symbol, it only goes in one direction. This is not coincidental. In fact, equivalence is just e uh, validity in both directions. Equivalence is just entailment in both directions. So if one sentence entails the other and vice versa, that actually means that they're equivalent. And so the reason, given that we know one of these entailments fails, that actually it shows that equivalence fails as well. So what we've been talking about here is all this stuff in blue. When Boole can actually prove that certain arguments are valid and when Boole can prove certain arguments are invalid. Those are the powers of Boole. Now, Boole also has a limitation that should be somewhat familiar at this point. Ah, notice, see what's different here you can hopefully, you immediately key into the fact. Now the identity predicate is on the scene. And this is where this highlights the limitations of Boole. You see, we didn't even have to worry about the limitations of Boole in those previous examples, because there were no identity relations. These are just random atomic sentences, and you didn't have to worry about that extraneous information. But once we give you an argument with identity predicates, now hopefully like red flags are going off. You know you need to start being more careful. Like take these two sentences, Pia is Simone and Simone is Pia. This is actually valid. Um, identity uh, is symmetric. If it goes in one direction, Pia is Simone, it goes in the other direction, Simone is Pia. But Boole doesn't realize that because the validity of this depends upon the identity relation. And that's not a true functional connective. It's not one of our Boolean connectives. So if we, if we translate these into Boole, you see this is going to get one atomic sentence, like A, and this will get a different atomic sentence, like B. They're different because these are not the identical sentences. Um, but the, but So this does entail this. This is valid. But A and to A thus B, this is not truth functionally valid. This is not valid by its truth table. In fact, you see, you might say A is an atomic sentence, so it gets T and F, and B gets T and F. So when they both have a T, they both have an F, so it seems valid. But remember, when you do a truth table, all the atomic sentences go in reference columns, and every possible combination is accounted for on the truth table. So there's going to be a row on which one of them is true and the other is false, or that where the premise is true and the conclusion false, more specifically. So row two shows that this is not valid, which means Boole does not see the validity of this argument. Boole thinks this is invalid, but in fact it is valid because of the extra information that we know. Um, and remember, remember the delete rows method that we saw before? The delete rows method can actually help us here. Now, the delete, neither of these is a logical truth. So we can't delete the rows because we know Pia is Pia. But what we can delete are rows where one is true and the other is false because we have that extraneous information that if one is true, the other has to be true too because of the identity um, relation. So what the delete rows method in this case actually tells us to delete rows two and three because that's where they don't have the same truth value. And then what's left are just um, rows in which whenever the premise is true, the conclusion is true. So the delete rows method can help us see the validity of this as well. Or 
I mean, that might seem like overkill. Hopefully you can just look at this and tell that it's valid, even though the truth table can't see as much. So again, what I'm talking about here are the limitations of Boole. Oftentimes Boole can prove arguments are valid or prove they're invalid. When we're just talking about the truth functional connectives and truth functional logic, Boole is, our, is a great um, logical system. If we're talking about other things like the identity relation, then we're gonna run up against the limitations of Boole. Okay, thanks.